I'm gonna I'm gonna do Canadian Dawa, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit softer, inshallah. Okay, a little slow, a little slowed down. But what what, what brought you guys to the park? Uh, well, I, I come down here. I'm I'm a, an, an atheist, but I like to come down here and sort of challenge the. It's normally the Christians that because I come from more of a Christian background, but um, I come down here as just my protest against those guys to try and okay. <laughs> be friendly and stuff and represent atheism in a nice way. Okay, interesting. I know Carl was interested in this stuff, so I was like, Carl's got to come down here and experience Speaker's Corner. So right. Martin was what got me to come song. here in the first place. <laughs> I see, okay, <laughs> okay. This is like only my second time. Second coming. time, wow. Yeah. Well, I hope it's a positive experience. I, oh, I, th yeah, I think yeah. most people are friendly here from what I've seen. Although I think what goes viral on YouTube is the is the, is the controversial is, discussions, right? Element, I think I think anything stupid. that's controversial is going to gain more attraction because again it's controversial. It's, right. Um, yes. Attention drawing. That's how marketing works. Yeah. yeah. But I, but I will ask you and, and feel free honestly to interrupt me. I want this to be a, as much of a discussion as it is, if, if anything, right? Um, I, I'd like to know, and you're welcome to ask me. I'll, I'll share with you what brought you to your journey about your current beliefs, right? And feel free to be candid. Uh, how did you arrive at your current beliefs right now? Um, well, I, I grew up going to church. Um, just do usual Bible Christian church. Um, then I kind of grew out of that and just, it didn't connect with me and there was stuff they couldn't answer. And, okay. And then I sort of like started to learn what atheism was and I realized I'm actually atheist. I don't really believe any of this. Okay. And then I wanted to be more proactive and being against what the churches uh, pre or what religions preach to people and what they do to people. Okay. So it, this is my peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's my way of trying to count out what they do. Understand. I, 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 <laughs> I, I understand. No, no, that makes. I understand it. Uh, yourself? Did you want to? Um, a similar background from Martin, and I, uh, I also went to Catholic school uh, growing up. Yeah. And uh, upon learning about sort of different religions, again, there's always there's always that uh, that question: why? You know, what's the meaning of life? And I think now we've become more globalized, so there's more of a like intertwine of like different religious faiths, especially say here in London, it's a very diverse city, even mm -hmm. in like a, a religious basis. And I've, I've just looked at other religions and they seem to provide like different answers. Every, like, these religions claim to be like the one true belief. You know, if you believe in this religion, uh, this and this will happen. Yeah. And so I, I've always just found myself questioning it. And even studying like, you know, um, at school, like you know, um, Christianity, uh, I think people just interpret religion differently. And this is why you have different uh, denominations of like Christianity. You've got uh, Protestantism. Uh, Catholicism, Methodism. Mm -hmm. So I just think uh, a lot of it's just based on interpretation. And so as I've gotten older and I've looked into more stuff and I've looked into philosophy, I think I've just slowly deviated away from like mainstream religion. Okay. H have you? So would you say both of your beliefs are fairly similar? You're both eight, classify yourself as atheists. I would, yeah, I would say you yeah. know, like agnostic atheists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, we're open uh, to yeah. religion. Yeah. I'm open to the idea that yeah. there is a God. Yeah. But until someone can demonstrate to me with good evidence and reason and logic and all those really good things, yeah. where you believe anything else in life, right? Um, until they can do that, I've got no reason. To believe it. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, like in life, like it's just good to have an open mind about like new ideas. Yeah. And I think that's why it's good that we have events like this because it's a public discussion of different ideas and beliefs. So I think that's why. Uh, Speakers Corner and like other sort of communities that have these get-togethers are so important yeah, yeah. because it's very important that we're not stuck in that echo chamber. So I think with social media now becoming more uh, prevalent in our lives, yeah. people, I think it's caused a massive echo chamber issue where right. stuff like religion and politics and just general discussion has become very yeah. polarizing and tri tribal because they will only listen to one side of the argument and I think that you can't be informed unless you listen to both sides and then right. come to your own conclusion. Again, it's that whole Sorry, thing. Sorry, so my nose is freezing cold. <laughs> it's that whole idea of just like thinking yeah. for yourself. Like don't listen to group think, weigh up the arguments, the pros and cons, and then just come to your your own conclusion yeah. based on the facts of like what each side's trying to present. And I think that's very important. But then because people uh, with the whole echo chamber thing, they're only subscribing to like, you know, pages or news articles that reaffirm their beliefs. I feel like in a way, it's just led to people becoming more tribal. Okay. You know, on, like being stuck on their side and then just not listening to like any other like uh, sides that sort of contradict their viewpoints. Right.
fantastic. No, thank you so much. So, uh, and, and Carl and Martin. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate that explanation. And I'm going to maybe even add to what you're saying that, that or uh, maybe um, feel free to weigh in here. Yeah. Uh, you started with the, the term atheist, which I thought was interesting because I was just speaking to another atheist the other day. But I realized after a discussion, they're, they're closer to agnostic and more open minded than I thought. Because when we think of atheists, we think of somebody who's, who's has positive evidence and claiming that there is no higher power, no God, nothing, nothing to be, no, no unseen to believe in, right? And I think what, what I like about what you said so far, actually, to build some common ground, is that you're saying you're open-minded, you're open to, to challenging your own beliefs, which is nice. Um, uh, in terms of your journey of how to get there, you said that you, you, felt like you, you felt like the church couldn't answer your questions. And you, I think you felt like it was too much of groupthink. Is that is that? I, I just I feel like there's too many like different sort of groups trying to provide the uh, the same answer. And so yeah. it's hard to decide sort of which say one group to subscribe yeah. to because again, like you know, they're all conflicting in their own ways. So okay. it's just the choice. I think as we become more globalized as a society, we're exposed to different religions now. So like I think people are less sure. Whereas back when um, societies were more sort of, oh, you know, Catholic, you know, over here we've got like the Jewish, like, uh, mob, like, I think now people are just a bit more unsure. Again, there's, I think, yeah, people are more agnostic now. But I think at the same time, it's just good to approach something with an open mind because if it, if it challenges your views, it could change your opinion and then you change as a person. And I think it's very important to be okay. open to new ideas. So. How much do you both know about Islam, just out of, just out of curiosity, from a, from a scale of 1 to 10? Um, so I would say... I assume you've done more research. I, if I can make that assumption, you've probably done more research. Have you interacted with Muslims at all in the past and, and gone into a theological discussion uh, at all? I, I'd say Martin's like... More See, I grew, up, I grew up in like the religion that I, was, that I was brought up in was Christianity. So I'm more familiar with that, obviously, yeah. that you grew up that. Be more familiar with that. Then once I step into atheism, then I listen to the atheist experience, which is from uh, Austin, Texas. Okay, really I've, I've heard about I it. I absolutely recommend everyone watch it. I've heard about it, yeah. Um, and they, they have a guy that's um, kind of talking from their the Islamic background rather than just Christianity. Um, so I'm learning stuff from there when people call in and talk about it, you know, blah, blah, goes back and forth. So I'm, I'm, I'm catching up with some of that. I've got a Quran at home. Okay. And, and, and I try and talk to, like, when they have the um, stand on the high street and they hand out Qurans. Which street? You know, Which um, Sutton High Street. Sutton High Street, okay. Um, so I'll go up and talk to them. and It's a different conversation than when I get the, the hellfire Christian ones that want to <laughs> shout down at people. That's a With positive those note. Ones, I have to shout back and I have to try and stand my ground. The thing I've got to say about Islam is I've never had a Muslim person in the high street shout their religion. Oh, that's, that's great. That's, never. I've never positive. experienced. Yeah, that's good I've to know. I've experienced people with a stand saying free Quran, leaflets, come up and talk if you want. Yeah. If you want to, we'll buy it. And that's cool. And so, that, you know, that's if I wave the two up, we've got to say yeah. one thing about Islam and how they try to draw people away. It's, it's way more peaceful. And, and Whereas I feel so, like uh, sort of the yeah. more Christian perspective, they're more aggressive. Like it's like, you know, sometimes they can be, like uh, they also have like, you know, they'll have like microphones and massive speakers and then yeah. they'll be giving like this sermon in the high street. And then like most people, <laughs> I just think like being aggressive sometimes isn't like the best yeah. approach because if you like force yeah. like uh, new Look. ideas upon other people, then they're less likely to uh, be opening to listening to them, yeah. being forced. Like, Allow a person to, yeah. to digest, Actually, yeah. Like, want to join in on the conversation. If they don't feel yeah. comfortable with, you know, the whole thing, then, like, you know, don't force it upon them because they're less likely to take your argument seriously. Yeah. You mentioned a few things. I, I, I do want to mention a few things. I might even bring in my friend Rahan if he's open to it. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, how much of, of the Quran have you read so far? How much have you read? Have you... Um, see it. This is why I say I'm not equipped to do a big You, you can just be, yeah. no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, it's not a debatable yeah, no, no, argument. No, no, you're not, you're not gonna, we're not going to start like, yeah, yeah. going over each verse. Yeah, yeah, no, but <laughs> have you said half, a quarter, or one chapter, or one, um, couple pages? Little bits and pieces. Okay. Like, okay. I, I've, you know, sort of looked at the guy, you know, read that on the, like, randomly pick things. Don't sit out with an agenda. Yeah. You're going to find the wrong things. Yeah. You're going to find the nice things. I'm just going to look at it and open mind like I read any other book. 
and just read bits and go, oh, yeah. I think of that. And I'll, I could open the Bible. Right. I know where the bad shit is in the Bible. <laughs> and I could look at random bits in that, but then I've also got a satanic Bible, and I can read bits in that. And I've also got books about Greek mythology. You know, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm in no way an expert on Islam, or I, I don't I know appreciate the Quran. That. <laughs> like I, I can find my way around the Bible as much. Or, no, I appreciate that. But yeah. In terms of being open-minded and being honest about looking at different religions, then I, I have to have a Quran and the Bible and all these different books in order for me to yeah. keep studying. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of religion also. Have, have you read the Quran yourself? Uh, or? No, okay. but actually, the first time I came here, I yeah. was speaking to a guy and he did give me a copy of a Quran. Yeah. I still have it. I've yet wow. to read it. Wow. Okay. So, uh, again, so uh, on that note, because listen, I, I, I guess my goal is that you know you, these Hyde Park videos are usually like forty minutes to two hours long. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to, I just want to do short and sweet, and, and and maybe even leave you with a few some food for thought, right? Yeah. yeah uh, because because I think like look, uh, it seems to me you're both very intellectual, very smart, intelligent, and and you're able to do the. You're able to get, you're able to at least get the research part done from by yourself. It seems yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, I would just add number one. If when you get a chance, go home and read the beginning part of uh, the Quran. So that's the first two or three pages. Uh, Surah Al Fatiha, Surah uh, Baqarah. You don't need to remember the Arabic names, but it's just basically known as the opening. Okay? And uh, um, from there on, just the first few pages. Uh, a lot of people have said it's very powerful, it's very impactful. Um, uh, Surah Baqarah, or the, the second chapter of the Quran, has been described as a summary of the entire Quran. Right? So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the one thing I would do. Um, the other thing is uh, continue with the research as you're already doing. Um, have you ever tried? Have you ever tried prayer? What is your concept on on prayer at the moment? Like you said, you you, 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 you said you're open to a, a higher power, but but have you ever have you tried prayer before? Yeah. I, obviously, I've done it when I was at church. So yeah. Yeah. The Quran. Yeah. You know, like for example, you have like synopsis, right? Yeah. You have like a uh, summary of the Quran. Just present that. Mm -hmm. Just give them a bit of a taste of mm -hmm. what they expect. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I, I think why the Quran is, um, as Brother Rahan mentioned, is a good point. Why is it very powerful? We believe it's preserved, right? This is one of the first points. So, so you'll get you'll get a very. Uh, uh, if you read the entire Quran, the, the takeaway one of the takeaways you should come up with is number one, there's only one God. So the yeah. the, the, yeah. the message of Tawheed is throughout the Quran. Right. Whereas, and I'm not trying to, to belittle our Christian friends, but try to find the Trinity in the Bible. Trying to find that that the, the claim of, of that Jesus is God in the Bible, it's it's not as easy as one might think. But the the the, the, the belief, uh, the fundamental belief of Tawhid and and Allah is one is rampant throughout the Quran. Right. Number two, um, uh, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of God. You'll find it there as well easily. Uh, number two, you'll also find lessons from the previous, previous uh, nations and civilizations, and what God, what we can learn from those things. When it comes to arrogance, when it comes to uh, humility, when it comes to worshiping God alone, when it comes to, as you said, not not doing groupthink, you know, uh, not just f following our desires, and uh, and this, and you'll also find a little bit of uh, rulings, ahkam, right? Um, so those are the three takeaways you might come up with. And again, we believe that Quran is. So it's not just we believe the Quran is preserved. Yeah. The way it was recited to the Prophet Muhammad is the way it was recited today. Because it was memorized. So I'll give you the, this, is an, this is an example that a lot of people give here in the park. If we took all the printed Qurans in the world and just like threw them in the ocean, we'd be able to bring it back just because of people have memorized it. I'm sure there's people who have memorized the entire Quran here. Uh, uh, I've, I've memorized a very small part of it, like one thirtieth or two thirtieth, two thirds, two, two thirtieths of it. But um, there's probably people here who have actually memorized the entire Quran. So, so that's one of the amazing things about it is its preservation. Because if you don't have a preserved book, then the, then then there goes your creed and your theology. Um, I do want to. I'll end with I'll end with du'a, the concept of du'a, because I think it's I think because here's the thing. This is what we believe. I don't believe. Uh, we don't even believe that this meeting is is by chance. We don't, we don't, we don't believe. We don't even believe that like everything happens for a reason. I know that you're, you're not opposed to the, the concept of prayer, to high, higher power, right? skeptical, right? But, but, it, but look, I, I've said to people, like, if you're sitting beside, by yourself in your room, and you just, you just, you just ask, oh God, if you're there, guide me. Oh God, if you're there, guide me. Guide me to the truth. And you do it sincerely, and it's not. I mean, let, let me let me just say, even, and we're all guilty of this. Sometimes we all pray uh, when, when life gets difficult. 
Yeah. Right? Someone dies or we're in a difficult situation and, and, and the, you know, that, that happens. We turn, to, we turn to something. We all, we all turn to it's something. It's like uh, you're, you're searching for hope. Yeah. So then, in a way, sometimes people turn to prayer as a yeah. form of hope, like a sort of last resort. Yeah. Mus something like bad happening in your life. Like yeah. Say someone's dying or something Mu like that or you're just on hard times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Muslim, Muslims pray daily. We say, Ihdina Sirat al uh, which means guide us to the straight path daily, on a daily basis, regularly. So before people came here, they, they prayed. Tonight we will also do a prayer as well too, whether by ourselves or in a group. And, and in that prayer we say, oh God, guide us to the straight path. The, the concept of dua, I, I always talk to, whenever I talk to atheists or Christians, because I think this is something we can kind of all agree upon. I, I understand in your scenario, it's going to be like, okay, well, is there a God that I need to pray to? Um, I, I want to actually maybe touch upon that and, and, and you know, maybe uh, scientism, philosophy yeah. of science. and and. So it's about does a god exist can someone demonstrate it? but if and if it's like okay here's the evidence that god definitely your god definitely because obviously there's lots of different gods um your god exists all the others are wrong you've got the right one um it de there's the other point of well we would say just, we, 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 we would god. say just, you know, just like, we don't have our own god, god. I don't have to yeah god. i'm so sorry to interrupt you because yeah, i sorry, we, we don't have our own god we, we remember we, muslims don't believe that we have our own god but but i mean yeah, yeah. you're um Deity. Allah, Allah like subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah. The, what you're following, yeah. You know, it's the head of, you know what I mean. Yeah, I apologize, <laughs> you know for, I mean? I apologize for interrupting you. It's all uh, right, man. Yeah. Correct but, me but, but, wrong, but, but I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll say like, um, you know, okay, to, you know, I, I think the point, to, just to hinge on that a little bit, the fact that you said you're open to, you're open to a, a, a higher power, you're open to creator, right? Um, so there's a couple of books that, that, that one could, could, one could read, Brother Rahan, feel free to recommend any books. Um, there's a brother here, he comes to the park sometimes, his name is Sabur Ahmed. He has a, a YouTube channel called Darwinian Delusions. Um, his friend also wrote a book uh, called um, The Divine Reality. It's, it's a book particularly for atheists. So, so it's by Hamza Zorsis, he's a Greek convert to Islam. They, these gentlemen particularly wrote books particularly for atheism. And the, and, the, and the reason why they did that is after their study of something called the philosophy of science. It's, it's something I came to learn about recently myself that, that you, know, you know how a lot of people say I believe in science? Yeah. I, don't be, I, I don't believe in religion, I, don't be, I, I believe in science. It's almost a way of like downplaying religion because there's, there's the whole <laughs> empirical like, aspects of yeah. you know, there's, there's data to prove because again in science um, an experiment goes through a process of review and scrutiny. Yeah. So then like those, those checks like, that are in balance to make sure that the data is accurate. So yeah. like I think it's a way that like sort of more the more sort of extreme believers of atheism where they sort of downplay religion and again have like this very sort of closed-minded approach to it. Yeah, Lo lovely point. The reason why is because uh, what Sabur and, and others have brought to light is what atheists themselves say, agno or agnostic scientists themselves say, that you know science can't prove or disprove God. They they were going into um, some of the assumptions behind some scientific theories. How some scientific theories have changed. Now, by the way, this is not to belittle science. Science is science is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. One of the most famous uh, scientists, Ibn Haytham, was Muslim, right? Who brought, who brought a lot of the technology, uh, inventions that we see today. You know, some of the some of the uh, inventions were based on some of the works that he did. But my, my point is, my point here was is that is that he science. The scientific yeah, yeah, it's not beautiful. Uh, Ibn Haytham founded the scientific method. So the point here is that science is science is not the end all be all. I think I think atheists have evolved actually. Is that what I would say? They're actually, I'd say, closer to agnostics, you know, and, and being open-minded. I, have, I haven't found, I've met very yeah. few, after, after deep discussions, mm. I've met very few hard atheists where they were like, no, I, I can't believe in anything unseen, because, because that, that puts into doubt a lot of other things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's love yeah. or, or yeah. other emotions yeah. and, and behaviors. But, um, yeah, that, that's, that's really what I'll leave with, is, is the, the concept of prayer. I think, unless Rahan had anything else to say, no, uh, no, that, no, that, was, that was that was no, that was it was a great discussion. That was the last, yeah. I think it was a great discussion okay. between the three of you. Yeah. And um, please, it's basically you know you have a mutual respect to each other. Um, but what I'll, I'll just add one more thing, which is I think 